What's going on guys? Javan Wade here. First of all, I just want to say huge, huge, huge apologies for not being able to make it. An emergency came up and I couldn't be there. But I just wanted to make sure that I was still able to add as much value to you guys as possible and, you know, essentially just kind of give you as much of what I feel like I would have been able to give you had I been there at the event today. So I just wanted to first off by start, um, start by saying you know, uh, what you guys are doing like as a movement is amazing and every single one of you there that has turned up today is, uh, you know, just a, 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 a congratulations to yourself really because you, you obviously have the mindset and you obviously are in a position of, you know, knowing what you want for yourself and knowing how to work on yourself and, you know, give as much value to yourself as possible. So let me take you guys back to the beginning and briefly give you the journey and then hope, you know, that we can answer some of your questions and go into that. So first of all, it started for me. I went to the Brit School, which is a performing arts school um, in South East London. And I went there when I was uh, 15 years old. I'm a, I'm a July baby, which means that my birthday is right at the end. Team Leo, shout out to all the Leos out there. Um, and, you know, being a part of the Brit School was an opportunity for me to be able to, you know, harness my skills and go and put myself in an environment, which is key, putting myself in an environment where I was going to be able to hone in on those skills and be able to give myself the best possible opportunity of being where I wanted to be. For me, I, I didn't I didn't always, you know, solely know that I wanted to be an actor. I used to play football. Um, I used to play professionally in an academy up until I was um, 15 years old. And I used to do acting classes prior to that. And I kind of made a decision and said, you know, do I want to do what I'm good at at that time, which is which was football, which I was really good at. Um, but I also loved playing. Uh, sorry, I also loved acting. And, you know, I would do classes every single weekend. And it was just a great opportunity for me to be able to home in on those skills. So after the first... Um, you know, trial of me not getting into another professional club when I didn't get a scholarship. I said, I'm gonna go full blast and try and really pursue this acting. And that's when I heard about the Brit School. So being there, studied there for two years. I didn't wanna to go to drama school, like a traditional drama school um, after my first two years. So I built a theater company with some of my, some of the other students and we decided that we were going to create, create a play and we were gonna take it around the Europe. So we took it to, um, to France, we took it to uh, Scotland, we took it to Sweden, all around Europe. And that gave me an opportunity to bide that time and that threshold to be able to work on what I really wanted to do, which was, you know, create my own work. I was fortunate enough to meet my business partner, my best friend, my co-star, Purcell Ascot, at the, um, at the school, at the Brit School, and we did our first play together, which was Shakespeare. We did um, Much Ado About Nothing. I played Don Pedro, he played Claudio. And, you know, our chemistry kind of, you know, just set off from that point. And we said to ourselves, you know what, look, let's take this thing full throttle and let's just keep going with it. So when we did our, our third year, which was um, our theatre company, we created this show online as an opportunity of creating as much opportunity for ourselves to put ourselves out there because I believe in solely of, you know, being able to be the master of your own fate, making sure that you do everything in your power to make sure that you don't have to rely on anyone else to be where you want to be. So we did. We created our own show, Man on the Wall. We had nothing at the time. All we had was an idea. And it's so important that when you have an idea that you say to yourself, I'm going to create this idea. Because if there's not an idea in which is, you know, manifesting into something physical and tangible, then there's no point in you having that idea in the first place. So for everyone that has an idea now, please Please do not you know, waste your time. Please go out there and create an idea in the same way that these guys had an idea to create an inspirational platform. And this is why you guys are all sat here today and I'm now speaking to you on this video because an idea happened. So we created Man on the Wall and off the back of that, after you know four episodes in, we had the approach from Big Talk Productions, which is a production company who said to us, look, what I want to do is, you know, bring your characters from Animal on the Wall and bring them into our Channel 4 show. So we took those characters, four episodes in, we had millions of views online and we said, yeah, let's do it. Let's create this, um, let's create these, these characters within this new world of youngers. But the big catch at this point was the fact that they said to us, okay, look, what we're going to do is we're going to have youngers as a show. And when we create this show, we're then going to pitch Man on the Wall as a show. So we got gassed. We was like, yes, you know, we're going to get our own TV show. Season one came. We didn't get a, an opportunity to, you know, pitch our show. Season two came. We didn't get an opportunity to pitch our show. We had left behind all of our online following from that point, And we said to ourselves, look, you know, we put all of our eggs in this basket. It's not actually happening. What, what are we to do? At that point, we could have kind of just said to ourselves, look, let's just stop, let's quit. But we decided, no, you know, maybe we don't have the same online following which we had before because we put all those eggs into that TV basket. But 
we set out on this journey in order to achieve something great, to create a legacy, and that's what we're gonna do. Again, so, so sorry that I couldn't be there as I'd love to be there to really get into your head and really kind of add as much value as possible, but there will be an opportunity for you guys to come and meet, whether we do it down at my office at the Wall of Comedy HQ or we set something up over the next couple of weeks in which the guys at Word of Mouth, Worth of Mouth will, will tell you and be able to kind of, you know, uh, point you in the right direction. So make sure you go and speak to someone uh, after. But we're gonna get into some Q&A and get into some questions right about now. Hey guys, my name is Kira Nicole and I'm a TV presenter for Milkshake on Channel 5 and I'm joined with Javan. So thank you for joining me today, Anytime. Javan. And also congratulations for everything like your successes for the past years. Thank you. Okay guys, so now you've sent in some questions for Javan to answer and we're now gonna get Javan to answer them. So, Casey the accountant asks, did you start out alone or with friends? Casey the accountant, I started out with my friends. Um, I started out the first um, project that I did which I put out there was with my two friends, which was with Purcell Ascot and Descarte. Um, my kind of journey in starting at the Brit School was by myself, but the moment that I found two guys in which I could, you know, go with, yeah, we took, we, we took the road and we ran with it. She also asked is, what advice would you give to someone starting off alone? Starting off alone, um, try and find like-minded people, try and get people around you in which are doing the same thing that you're doing or at least have the same mindset as you, which keeps it easier for you to be able to maintain at times of distress or times where you want to give up or quit. And you know, just start with whatever it is in which you've got, anything around you in which you've got, start with that. And I promise you, as long as you're thinking in the right way, the universe will provide everything you need. Lovely. And at that Alex Moore asked, what's the worst advice you often hear in your area of business? Um, yes, Alex, the worst advice that I hear in my area of business would be, what I would do is, <laughs> that's probably the worst advice because for me personally, I don't take advice from people who are not either in a position that I want to be in or haven't done already what I want to be doing. Mm -hmm. And you get a lot of people which have opinions on what you should or shouldn't do and they've never been in a situation to do that. It's like when they say, you know, you don't listen to your teacher when it comes to, you know, finding out about how to make money. Like, you listen to someone who's made a ton of money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's simple. Mabinti Taylor Kamara asked, what is your greatest strength and how did you put it to use? My greatest strength is um, I am very decisive and I'm very mm -hmm. logical. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm very, uh, very black and white. Like, and that I feel like has helped me across the board where it comes to you know leading people and yeah. what you need to do when you run a company and a business and also you know choices in which are made um my ultimate strength i would say is probably knowing and trusting my gut mm -hmm. trusting my inner self to be able to know what i should do what i shouldn't do and even when things are telling me that i should do something not doing it or when things are telling me not to do something i still do it because i trust my instinct Okay, and like if you had to give people advice, because you know sometimes waking up in the morning and obviously you have that mindset like I need to do everything, mm. but if they're not feeling productive, what would you give them? Like what why advice? Find your why, like why? Yeah. Why do you do anything? Like every morning I wake up, every morning you wake up and you feel tired, you're mm -hmm. not going to want to wake up. Yeah, like course. naturally your body's going to say sleep and that's when your why kicks in and you mm -hmm. say, well, why am I going to get up? Whether it's because I've got to go to school and I need to get an education or because if I don't, I don't make money and which mm. then doesn't feed my family or I don't gonna get, I'm not gonna get to do this opportunity. Find your why and, and your why should always wake you up in the morning. And if mm. your why doesn't wake you up, then your why is not big enough because people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Mm -hmm. And at underscore Anwar Patel underscore said, what are your success habits? My success, my success habits, um, my biggest one is just a lack of procrastination. Like I don't really kind of think about something and not pursue it or not do mm -hmm. it. Like if I have an idea, then I always make it happen. Um, otherwise, it just it, it won't get past that part of my mind. Yeah. Um, so always doing what I set out to do and my success habit, just work. I work so hard. Mm. Like that's one thing that I will never be afraid to kind of, you know, talk about is like how hard I work and my team. Like we, we go ham. Like yeah. we don't, we don't leave this place like we just work and work and work and we know that when we get to a certain point that you know everything is going to help us and we're going to be able to help everyone else but yeah we just we just work hard man like the world owes you nothing you can die tomorrow
It's true. Like that's it, isn't it? Like you can die tomorrow. If you die tomorrow, well gone. Well, what are people going to be saying about your life? How? How? What's your impact? Like, by all means, I want to live as long as I can. But if I die tomorrow, due to my time in which I've been on this earth, I, I've done a, I've done a pretty decent job. Yeah, Javan, thank you so much for letting us interview you. Anytime. It's been amazing. And guys, thank you so much for listening and watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Yo, guys, once again, big, big, big shout out to you guys for attending. Just wanted to make sure you guys know that I will be holding a meet and greet with you guys, with Entrepreneurs Club, with Worth of Mouth, here at my offices, and the guys will have the details and we'll let you know when that's gonna be. I'm looking, oh, I'm excited for it, man. Let's get it. much love.